Hello, and welcome to my gigantic marathon of oddball O to V's. Um, I am starting to become a little bit of a huge O to V fan. Um, they're just wonderful to sit and sip with. Um, they don't, I mean, there's a, and it's, it's a totally different way of thinking about spirits than I'm, I'm usually used to. Um, and I'll, well, I'll, let me, let me talk about that in a bit. Um, so what I've got here is I've got two oddballs, uh, fig and, and, uh, quince. I got a pair of mirabelles and I got a pair of cherry brandies. Um, and we're going to, none of these have, have, have uh, touched oak. Some of them have been aged in inox in, um, stainless steel. We'll get into the details later. I'm not, I already poured these so you don't have to like suffer through my, you know, having to grab them and try to knock, knock each one over. Um, but I am going to add a drop of water to each one as we walk through. Um, okay. So, I mean, the thing about eau de vie that is fun and kind of radically different from what I am usually used to in the world of spirits is, um, they don't give you these huge range of, uh, like different, uh, tasting notes, right? You can't rattle off a dozen things when you're tasting, you know, a pear brandy or something. Uh, you, most of what you should get is pear, um, or whatever fruit it is. They're like the, the goal here when you're distilling these things tends to be not let's make the most bonkers high ester smoky crazy spirit we can it's let's take the fruit we've got you know from the fields that have come out of the earth and let us translate that into what's in the glass um so the tasting notes tend to be simpler um but that doesn't mean you're dealing with anything any less special or interesting or wonderful all right so let's go through these um we're going to start with something I have never even heard of before. This is uh, Boca Bobos, uh, sorry, Bo Bo Boca Bokobska, Bo Bokosa, uh, Fig Eau de Vie from Tunisia, from the uh, La Sucre distillery. Um, this is bottled at 40%. I got a, a, a nice sample of this. this is, it's, it is also kosher for Passover. Um, so let's give this a whirl. I added a little drop of water to these just to open them up. I'm not going to go back through these for a second round. Um, I figure six, six sets of tasting notes is enough. So we're just going to go do these in a one -er, give them a score, and move on. Oh, and I can, I can already smell this. Not even just, – just, just holding it like this, I can smell it. Oh, my God. Well, I, I don't know what I expected a fig brand to smell like. Um – I mean, it smells like figs. Wow, that's really that that just smells like figs, and it, God, it's yummy. Uh, I mean, there's other stuff going on here. It's there's some honey notes, um, heavier honeys. We're talking manuka honey, like uh, buckwheat honey, that kind of thing, like the really like syrupy, dark, heavy. Uh, sorts of honeys, not not forest honey. It's not like really nutty or sour, but um, y you know what I'm talking about. Oh, there's a seediness to this. There's uh, the the little thick seedy things are coming through. Some dried flowers. There's some like dark chocolate notes coming through, um, like Ugandan dark chocolate. Rum raisin, um, some more honey notes, and just a lot of like fig, fig, fig. And usually, I mean, so I have to give, I have no idea who's making this. Um, but well, first of all, well done, Tunisia. This is, I am already enjoying the heck out of this. Uh, um, I mean, the, the, what usually when I see 40% on anything, particularly something as delicate as an O2V, I say, uh-oh, like this is going to be compromised. This is going to be, the flavors are going to be smudged and it's not going to work out. This though, I mean, it's not, a, again, O2V, it's not a huge range of flavors, but what's there, the figgy deliciousness is coming through loud and clear and God, it's just, it's just nice. 
All right, let's give this a try on the palette. Mmm. Mmm. So it is, okay, I would be remiss not to mention that it is maybe, I mean, if you're staring hard at it, it is maybe just a hair bit brittle, a hair bit thin on the palette. I think from the bottling strength, there's a hair bit of like bitterness coming through. Um, and that's just from the, the fact that it becomes a little bit thinner makes it come across a little bit more bitter. Um, but... But, 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 the character here is absolutely compensating for that. Figs, heavy, you know, heavy metal honey, heavy metal mixed honey. Um, there's some, like, low ester kind of floral Jamaican rum going on here, which I'm into. Like stewed fruit, like stewed apples and pears. A little bit of dried flour, raisins, cherries, some prunes, some dates, a little white pepper, a uh, little bit of a rockiness. There is that uh, kind of slightly annoying, like thin, brittle, like ethanol bitter thing going on. And I, you know, I have to score based on that. But um, I was not expecting this to, to rock my world. And it's, it's kind of showing me a few moves. Uh, I am I am extremely impressed with this little offering. Well done, La Sucre Distillery. Well done, Tanisha. I'm going to give this uh, flat 84 points. Very nice indeed. Um, and you know, if you're looking for something just delicious to bring for you know Passover or um, any old kosher occasion, like this is not so. It just smells like fig, and it tastes like fig, and it's delicious. This is a great option for that kind of that kind of uh, that kind of occasion. Um, okay, let's move on. We have got Imperian Quince Brandy, um, forty-one percent alcohol by volume. This is made by uh, AS Group in Serbia. Um, so Quince is a, a it's a fruit. It kind of looks like a pear, like a weird pear. But it's actually it's it's a it's more hardcore. You can't even really eat the things until you cook them. And they have this very kind of bitter nature to them. Uh, but they work really well in like jams and preserves and stuff like that. Uh, Quince, check it out. Um, uh, I do not know these people. I bought a couple of brandies from them because they were not particularly expensive. But we will we'll see how they are. Uh, screw top, that's pretty cool. Oh, hello. And okay, I hate to be—I hate to be the guy who says this sort of stuff. But right away, you can see the difference that that, that even that one percent, that one percent uh, volume, makes with this. Okay, so it smells like quince. And if you if you don't want, know what quince smells like, I have to kind of analyze that out for you. Um, so things like crab apples. But then, like, you're gonna mix that up with like some cinnamon sticks and some clove. Aromatic pear, um, like Asian pear. There's a uh, there's a lot of minerality on this. There's some rocks, kind of a, like a floral candy thing. And it's actually quite a beautiful nose. Um, and really, that's the, that's kind of tends to be the strength of eau de vie. Is like they're all going to deliver on the nose. Um, and beyond that, I, like I don't. That's kind of that's kind of all I got. Like, and that's the problem with these things. When you watch them on YouTube, you 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 do like Scotch reviews in particular. You can just rattle off the notes. Now with these, this uh, it's like okay, it smells like quince, and that's awesome. Rocks, some flowers in there too, some pear. Yeah, I mean that's <laughs> that's kind of all I'm getting, and it's awesome, and I'm really enjoying this. All right, let's try this uh, this Empyrean. Uh, oh, great name, by the way. That is, it just Empyrean. It smells. It still. It sounds serious. 
Let's try this on the palette. Oh man. Oh man. That is good. That is really, really good. That is really, really, really good. Who are these people? Um, okay, so it's I, I so it did, did win an award at Kosher Fest 2008, so I guess it is also kosher. I don't know anything else about this, but this is awesome. Yeah, so on the on the on the arrival, I'm getting yeah stewed quince, which is very kind of crab apple slash aromatic pear. Um, but then in the development, suddenly there's just tons of flowers. There's some chamomile going on, cinnamon spice, um, like coffee cake, some allspice, apples, pears, um, white pepper. Oh, the minerality showing up in the development, the mid palette into the finish. And it's just this long, deep finish, like dom totally dominating my entire mouth. It's floral and fruity and rocky. And oh, I just love this. It may not have like the breadth of character that... Uh, you, 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 I mean, you might be expecting, and again, no huge number of tasting notes, but um, this is terrific. I'm going to give this, I marked this down as an 85. I think I'm, I underrated this. I'm going to give this an 86. 86 out of 100. Okay, I did not expect Serbia and Quince to come on that hard, but uh, here we are. Uh, okay, moving on. Uh, in, in the death seat after that uh, is Clear Creek, um, one of my favorite American distilleries. This is a little sample bottle um, given to me by my friend Leftmost Cat. Clear Creek Eau de Vie of Mirabelle. Actually, I should, I should say both of these are Mirabelle Eau de Vies. Um, Mirabelle is, uh, oh, I don't, so ba it's basically a plum, but it's not a, it's, it's a, it's a very interesting variation on plum. It's like orange. It's orangey colored. Um, it has this very distinctive kind of plum meets orange taste. It's very hard to describe, um, but they're delightful. And if you had a chance to try them again, get that get that flavor in your vocabulary. You will get it all the time in um, in cognacs in particular. There's a lot of Mirabelles, uh, but just a lot they, they show up a lot lots of times. So it's, it's a good flavor to know. Um, all right, so Clear Creek Eau de Vie of Mirabelle. This is from Hood River in uh, Oregon. Uh, no idea which batch this was, but I assume it was after their move in to Hood River. Uh, it is bottled at 40% uh, alcohol by volume, but uh, you know, let's uh, let's give this an honest shot. Here we go. On the nose, this is extremely clean, which is kind of the the Clear Creek style. They're, these things are just razor sharp and precise and clean. Like there's no sort of excess or, or it, these things have been, you know, counting their calories and doing their cardio and they are just cut, you know? I mean, it smells like Mirabelle. So that's to say kind of like, think like orange slice candy, that kind of thing. But that meets a little bit of like sliv of it. So you're going to take orange slice candy and you're going to pour a little sliv of it on there. Um, Beyond that, there's some like, like dates, uh, some slight floral notes. Um, I will say the nose feels a little bit a little bit smudged due to the low proof, but um, I don't know, a little bit of like raspberry pie or something. I mean, it's a very you know delicate nose. It's very clean. Um, and the proof is bugging me. I, it, it just always does with these. Okay, but let's see how it behaves on the palate. This is the moment of truth. Mm. 
I mean, it's it's yummy. It's absolutely yummy. But it's it's thin. It's simple and it's kind of thin. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm getting so I'm getting like Mirabelle, of course. So we're talking orange slice candy meets uh, well Slivovitz, but also that that kind of lemon like a kind of lemon peel thing. Um, The finish is decent enough on this kind of like wet stone meets stewed berries thing, like or maybe like berry eau de vie thing. Some white pepper in there, uh, but I got it. But it, it's it kind of fades quickly. It just feels like there's. It feels like there's not enough going on. It's just a little thin. And I hate this. I hate this because every time I try something from Clear Creek, I have to say the, the same damn thing over and over again, which is that this should be bottled at higher proof. Um, yeah, this is an 81 pointer. It's not, it's not bad in any way. I mean, I, I, I like the style here. I like what they're going for. I like the cleanness. It just needs more, more power. Um, and the thing is, like I, I've exchanged. I've had a couple of exchanges with, um, with Joe, the the guy who uh, well, he used to be head distiller at, at Clear Creek, and now is running, uh, uh, the head distiller at, at Hood River uh, overall. And I I've, I've complained about this to him. And I'm pretty sure, like, in his heart of hearts, he probably agrees with me. But, you know, he's not the one that needs convincing. You know, you, you got to talk to the marketers and the product development people. And I, so now I'm talking to you, marketers and product development people. I mean, up the proof of this stuff and you will see sales, you know, not go through the roof. But they will tick up. They will absolutely tick up. And if, I mean, look at this. Like, we've got some... Some Alsatians and and like Southwest Germans, so it's like Swabians in here, right? That's the region you're you're supposed Clear Creek is supposed to be inspired by, and like this the the German here is forty two percent. Both the Alsatians are at forty five. So the the, pulp, the people you are modeling yourself after are now bottling in higher proof than you are, and you're American. This is America where we can go and buy Ezra Brooks and get it at forty five percent. So for, for the love of God, just start selling your stuff. It's, I'm not even, I'm not talking like 50, 60% alcohol, just up it to like 42%, maybe 45. You don't need more than that. That's fine. Do some crazy uh, higher strength releases every once in a while if you like to, but the standard stuff just, it just needs to be, to be a little, that little bit bigger. Um, sorry, rant there. Um, I, I hope some of that gets through. Uh, saying this stuff on the internet is, feels a little bit hopeless sometimes. Yeah, the, the foundation of this is there. It just needs more. It just needs more. Um, okay, moving on to one of my absolute favorite distilleries in the world right now. Mete in Riboville, Alsace. Um, this is their Eau de Vie, uh, Via Mirabelle, so also Mirabelle based. Um, this was aged, I think, one year, at least one year in Inox, so stainless steel. Uh, pot distilled. Um, no idea what, what year this came out, but it is bottled at a healthy 45% alcohol by volume, which is nice. Um, okay. So I am fully expecting, so this should bury the Clear Creek. And if it doesn't, that's a problem because it's bottled at higher strength and it's more expensive. Um, so let's see what we've got. Um, much sharper on the nose. Much sharper. On the, so we're getting the same, that same kind of Mirabelle note, you know, orange candy meets, meets Slivovitz, but there's also a lot of grapefruit coming through. And what is that? Like, um, 
Like, do you know, like, like that distinctive, very sharp character in, like, from Concentrate Orange Juice? Or even, like, Orange Juice from Concentrate. You buy the, the, the little, um, the frozen can thing, and you just kind of open the top up on that, and you smell it before you uh, mix it up with water. That, it's that kind of smell, that very sharp oranginess, but nice. Um, there's some Earl Grey tea, like some tea notes with kind of aromatic orange. You know, wet rocks again, that's kind of becoming a thing with this, with this, with this video. A couple of flowers, a couple of wildflowers, maybe some daisies in there. A little fennel, fennel if you go looking. I mean, it's, it's. It's a simple nose, but there's there's depth there. There's um, and that's kind of the point with this. These are not. I, I'm not going to repeat myself. It's you cannot rattle off a whole bunch of tasting notes on these, but that's not really the point. There's, you're you're getting. I am getting Mirabelle on this, and there's sort of depth to the to the kind of representation there. All right on the palette. Okay, so on the one hand, um, this really kills the Clear Creek on, particularly on the mouthfeel, which is kind of overall, uh, but it's also maybe the least favorite of the metes I've tried so far. It behaves, it, there's more interest here on the palate than there is on the nose. Um... Actually, the palate is quite nice. It's very, it's very creamy. It's very like stone driven. Again, it's dominating my entire mouth. Lots of like again, orange slice candy, meat slivovitz, um, some flowers, uh, fennel, lime zest. Nice long finish and a very deep finish. Um, still basically very, it's simple on the nose and the flavors on the palate are still pretty simple. But this is all about the mouthfeel. This is just about the way it washes over your entire mouth and kind of just dries it out, takes it over with the, uh, the floral, rocky, delicious mirableness. Um, I'm going to give this an 84 out of 100, which is the lowest score I've given uh, to a Mete so far. Um, doesn't mean I don't like it, but, you know, if you're going to skip one, this might be, might be a good one to skip. Okay, moving on to our pair of cherry eau de vies, one from Germany and one from Alsace. But they're not really that far apart because, because this is Baden. This is... Um, the far southwest of Germany. Okay, this is, uh, and, and by the way, if there's one bottle here that you can probably get where you are, it is almost certainly this, Schlatterer. Um, Black Forest Kirschwasser uh, from, oh, where, where's the city? Uh, yeah, Staufen im Breisgau which is right in the, the sort of southwest corner of Baden. So basically right on the border with Alsace. A um, lot of exchange of culture going on there. So kind of an Alsatian style of cherry eau de vie, except made in Germany. Ooh, and it's a fun nose. Uh, bottle at 42%. Are you paying attention, Clear Creek? I will, I will stop tro trolling Clear Creek. Creek. I'm, they're, they're doing the best they can, I'm sure, but really. Um, bottle at 42%. Mm. I mean, this smells like dirt. I mean, it's eau de vie of dirt, and I, I love that. Oh, my God. Is there cherry in this? Yes, there's a lot of cherry juice, too. Um, some some cherry pits, exactly one cherry stem, so a little bit of stemminess, not too much. 
maybe a flower or two too as well um um but this is but really what's overwhelming is the earthiness of this oh that's fun i do love i, I i'm just having a lot of fun with these this is really just all there's not a lot of of uh huge detail to be found in this either but it's really just it's it's just it's great because it's all about the interplay between the dirt the mud the earthiness and those sort of very subtle fruity floral notes especially the fruity notes nice really nice okay on the palette Also very nice, and definitely showing me like a like a couple of moves on the development front. This really starts off with cherries, you know, cherry fruit and and cherry pit. A lot of pit on this, a lot of that kind of nuttiness from the pits, and then moving into like mud and dirt and wet stones. And I kind of struggle to pick out any notes beyond that. Maybe some cardamom in there, maybe. maybe. But this isn't really about those that long list of notes, right? This is about really nice mouthfeel, really nice sort of um, contrast of flavors, great development, really good finish, very long, very driven by just rocks and dirt and the cherry pits. Yeah, really good. Um, I mean, if in turn, this is actually, so I wasn't expecting the, um, the cherry eau de vie and the Mirabal eau de vie to be really that comparable, but in some ways, this is reminding of how the Mete behaves. This is really a lot more about the mouthfeel than anything else, about just the way it develops in the mouth than about distinctive flavors. The difference is I think this is delivering more uh, flavor and more flavor contrast than the Mete is. So I'm going to give this an extra point. We're going to call this an 85 out of 100. Great little effort by, by Schlatterer here. And again, you should be able to find this where you are. Um, it seems to get a lot of um, a lot of dis good distribution, and um, I mean it's going to be confused with the Kirs the Kirs. This is not that. This is very very dry, and very very earthy. Um, but look past the confusion. Give this a shot. Uh, it's pretty good, and it's very reasonably priced. Okay. Last up is a Nussbaumer, also a cherry eau de vie. This is the eau de vie exception. Uh, Vaux Kirsch de, de Meris, uh, and Nussbaumer is from uh, Stig uh, in Alsace. This is aged in um, uh, stainless steel for some length of time. I'm guessing a long time based on the, the declaration that this is Vaux. Uh, um, and it is bottled at 45% alcohol by volume. Good going, Alsace. That's what we want. Once again, the Alsatian is more like fruity and sharp than its uh, its international, you know, sparring partner. So I'm getting lots of sh so the the less earthiness on this. I'm getting lots of sour cherry, tons of sour cherry, more sour cherry. Um, some mineralities a couple of rocks floral hints lots of black pepper it's more about the the black pepper the sort of you know peppercorns than it's about actual dirtiness and mud on this so we're talking about a cleaner example of the breed but one that's also bringing like a high level of, of a sense of acidity to it it's very sharp and let's see what happens on the palette
Whoa. You know, I was I honestly was not expecting that much from this because I didn't really enjoy uh, Nussbaumer's Mar, their um, Gertrude and Mar very much, but this is, this is good. Um, so, especially on the arrival and the mid palette, I'm just getting the most, there's really nothing going on, but the most delicious, like pure cherry jam ever made. Like, like this is your grandma's cherry preserves, or there's, there's still like some, some whole jam, you know, uh, cherries mixed in there. Oh, that's righteous. Not the most complex thing in the world, but there's a viv there's a vividness to the way the flavors are showing up here that is absolutely winning me over. Um, and then the, the, the cherry jam thing um, kind of gives way to, to some ash and like some, some stones uh, in the finish. A little bit of white, white tea, um, little floral hints, some, some pepper, black pepper. And there's just this really kind of beautiful interplay between like the fruit and that kind of ashiness, which kind of shows up on the back end. Um, okay, so it's it's got a mix of campfire ash and sort of almost a plastic ash, like a burning ash uh, action figure sort of note. I sometimes get on on um, on um, like Martinetian rums, like Agricole rums. Really interesting, and and just kind of again, like the the opening fig brandy brings a level of deliciousness, which you may not be anticipating. Um, I'm going to give this an 85 plus. I'm just I just as much as I love the 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 Schlatterer, and I, I encourage you to go out and, and seek this out. Um, the the deliciousness, the jammy factor on on the Nussbaumer is winning me over versus the, the kind of mud and dirt aspect of the slaughterer. Um, so I'm gonna give it a little plus over that. And uh, we're done. We're all done. So what do we got? The, uh, the, the buka, um, which kind of shocked me out of, out of nowhere, gets an 84. This is really good. And bring it for your next Passover. It's, it's terrific. Um, the Empyrean, the Quince Brandy, gets an 86 it actually wins this out um which i did not i done, did not see coming um serbia wins this uh the clear creek uh the humble little clear creek out of the Amirabel, 81 good not not good could be good with higher strength uh the mate uh mirabel uh 84 points um fun really nice mouthfeel Really good delivery of flavor. Not their best, but I like it anyways. Not their best. Uh, Slaughterer, earthy, dirty, um, but balanced off by lovely fruit, 85. Nussbaumer, absolutely delicious. Go, I mean, go buy this and, and the, the, the buka if you're just trying to find stuff that's delicious. Um, and that's it. That's what I got. Thanks for watching um, and cheers.